the message I want to convey through this video to my friends, to my family, to everyone who has open ears to listen is that you define your own success, you and only you. And this, this is the first YouTube video I ever created. I didn't have a set plan. I just turned on the camera and I started talking. Then about a week later, I deleted it. Three and a half years later, here I am, continuing what I started all that time ago. And I've had plenty of time to reflect on why I halted and stopped myself in the past. And I realized I'm really not the only one who goes through this. If you've ever experienced any type of creative block in your life, this video is for you. What's happening, everybody? I'm Olu. I'm a 2016 Olympian representing Nigeria in the triple jump. And if you don't already know me, I'm also training for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics coming up this summer. If they happen this summer. And no, these glasses are not prescription. I do not wear glasses. I do not wear contacts. These are actually blue light filter glasses that I picked up because I do a lot of my shooting and editing at night. So if you're wondering why I have a new look, this is it. It's nothing fancy, but I do like them and I actually think they really work. So if you want to check them out, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to do that. Without further ado, let's get right into it. One thing I just cannot stand is being put into a box as being just an athlete. I hate that label. It makes me sick to my stomach. So that's why I've kind of changed the direction of my YouTube channel recently, where I'm kind of more speaking on the platform and the lessons that I've learned. I felt more driven, especially as of late, as I'm approaching the tail end of my athletic career, to really share more of my lessons gained through sport rather than just me participating in it. But here's the thing with making a major pivot in your life. The people around you are going to be shocked, especially when they're used to seeing you just run, jump, or throw. When I first posted those videos that I began this video with on my Instagram account years ago, they didn't really gain as much traction as any of the videos I post of my training and competition. And that really threw me off. I was so used to getting instant traction and attention and likes and shares and all that great stuff. And when that didn't happen, I decided that, okay, well, if sharing my more creative side isn't really gaining attention, then it's not worth doing at all. While I've always felt driven to speak on camera, and if you know me, you know I like to talk, I've always been driven to speak on camera, so making a YouTube channel was just something very natural for me to do. But it was only when I started considering the validation and the attention of others that I then prevented my own self from doing what I felt naturally driven to do. And therein lies where I first developed a real creative block, at least in my adulthood. Now, like I said, it took me a few years to learn this process and really grow through it. But now at this point, I've gotten through a good amount of my creative blocks. And I wanted to share some of those deeper lessons with you guys here. So here's what I've learned. Everybody, and I mean everybody, is innately creative. It doesn't matter what form that takes. In fact, creativity can take as many forms as there are people on this earth. But the fact remains that everybody has a seed of creativity within them from birth. Now, for me, for over nearly two decades actually, I've been expressing my creativity as an athlete on the track. Some athletes express it in other sports. Some people do it visually with the arts. Some people write. Some people design video games. The fact remains that no matter how you express it, everybody is creative and it doesn't even have to be an athletic or artistic pursuit. But because society tends to reward what we traditionally think of as art in terms of media being visual or musical, most people tend to block themselves from truly expressing that creative side. The reason why I'm making this video is because this goes beyond art. This goes beyond hobbies. When we can really get in touch with our creativity, that's how we start to create, see what I did there? All the goals and dreams that we've wanted in our lives to begin with. So for me as an athlete, it's very important to express my creativity because if I'm holding myself back in one avenue, whether that be I'm not drawing because I feel like my sketches are ugly or I'm not posting these videos to Instagram or whatever the case might be because I'm afraid of you know, not getting the proper attention. If I block myself in one way or another, I am going to block myself from ex ex 
express uh, I'm going to block myself from expressing my full potential in my sport. There is no difference. There is no distinction. Who you are on the field is no different than who you are off of it. And when you can realize that and express yourself authentically off the field, you then allow yourself to express yourself fully on it. Now, I know that was a lot, so I'm going to actually dive deeper in here. And hopefully, I won't ruin it. Just stay with me, okay? When you step out of your comfort zone and trust your gut, the things you really need have a funny way of making their way to you. So I recently made the decision to take my creative pursuits more seriously, from shooting YouTube videos regularly, to writing, to even drawing and sketching. And as I did so, I started to run into a lot of the same blocks that led me to delete my YouTube channel three, two, three years ago. And that's right about the time where I found this. This book is called The Artist's Way. It's by Julia Cameron. And in it, she describes a lot of tools that she came up with and learned over the years of how she could unblock herself creatively to really live the life that she wanted to live to her fullest potential. Now, I'm only on chapter one, but I can already tell you that this book is a game changer. One of the tools that Cameron shares is something I've actually been doing naturally on my own for the past few years now. And seeing it written just was more of a motivation for me to share it with you. But before I even get into it, I should tell you now, this requires work. Now I know that probably scared off most of you watching this, but you should know that if you take this seriously and you're seriously consistent, it will work for you. The idea is if we're trying to reach our fullest potential, we should remove as many roadblocks in our paths to do so. Many of those roadblocks are completely out of our control, but for the ones that come from within us, we owe it to ourselves to work on them and work on removing them. The idea is to see yourself not as who you are now, not just as you are today, but who you want to be in the future, who your dream version of yourself is. Then you begin to do all the things that your future version of yourself would be doing now. And I can already hear it in your head right now. I can hear all the negative thoughts and doubts and excuses. They usually feel like that sinking feeling in your gut right after you have a really good or exciting idea. Says, oh, I don't have enough money to do it though. But I'm not smart enough. How could I ever? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out a piece of paper and you write down all of these thoughts. Write it all down, don't hold back. Go stream of consciousness with it. Write it all down. It's important that you get it out of your head and onto the paper in front of you. The aim here is to catch all of these self-limiting ideas and thoughts as they come up. Because once you catch them and you become aware of them, then you can begin to change them. But like a virus on your computer, if you're not aware it's there, it's gonna be running the programming in the software and you're gonna be powerless to change it. But once you're aware of it, you can then work on removing it. So I'll take you through my own workflow as an example. Four to eight years from now, I see myself as a well-known personality. Now my definition of a well-known personality is someone who creates content of all types and forms from podcasts to YouTube videos and on social media and writing books and the whole nine as my life's calling because that's where I feel driven and that's what my passion is. But right after saying to myself all those visions and dreams that I have, I usually have a slew of doubtful thoughts or blurts as Julia Cameron calls them, pop up in my head. The typical ones go something like this. But I'm not well known enough to create a podcast and I haven't accomplished, accomplished enough to even speak about my expertise. I'm only 29. How much do I really even know? People are gonna think I'm arrogant or I'm like holier than thou. I haven't even made that much money so I can't even prove myself. Besides, I'm an athlete. The people I know wanna see me run and jump, not talk. Now take note that all these reasons I just came up with None of them are actually based in actual fact. They're all coming from within as doubtful thoughts that I start to believe. So here's how we get beyond them. For each of our blurts, we're gonna create a positive affirmation out of them. When I say to myself, I'm not well known enough to create a podcast, I can reframe that by saying the people in my life receive tremendous value from my podcast. And when I'm beating myself up by saying, I haven't accomplished enough at the age of 29, I can remind myself that my life experiences are valuable 
and they will help others along their path. And every time I think I'm being arrogant, I will remind myself that I am placed here to speak my truth authentically. And when I'm talking about how I haven't made enough money to even prove myself, whatever that even means, I can remind myself that I create abundance by sharing my passions with the world at large. And whenever I feel myself discrediting my own talents because I'm quote unquote, just an athlete, I'll remind myself that I have multiple talents and each of them uplift my community around me. Going through this process step by step might be tedious, but as I said earlier, when you put in the work, you gain the rewards. This is kind of like the concept of alchemy, where we take something that appears to be bad and we transmute it into something positive for our lives. With regular practice, we can begin to unblock ourselves. And watch, if you do this consistently, I guarantee you, you will see transformation in your life. It's just how things work. Now we can go way deeper down this rabbit hole and start talking about where we actually picked up these doubtful negative programmings from and the source of all that. But I think that's enough for this video. But of course, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video on that topic in the future. I would love to do it. If this video was beneficial for you in any way, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It will really help the channel grow and always keep giving me your feedback because as I get your feedback, it directly influences what I create next. All right. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Oh, wait. Wash your hands. Cover your cough. But not like this. Like this. All right. We don't, we don't play that coronavirus stuff out here. All right.